Why are also infants to be baptized? Oh, now here's where we come to the controversy. First of all, a couple of things. We are going to look at the Bible, and it's important that we see that to baptize ba babies is biblical. That's ultimately why I hope to show you. But I'll also be saying some other things that will help put what I'm going to say about the Bible sort of in its proper, its proper context. For example, um, and I realize the only thing that can prove infant baptism is the Bible, but you need to think about other things too. For example, probably 75% of Christians today okay, baptize babies. Now, I agree, that doesn't in and of itself make it right, you've got to look at the Bible. But the point is, the vast majority of Christian churches baptize infants. Now, they may do it for different reasons or have a little bit different theology, I won't dispute that, but the overwhelming majority of Christians baptize babies. The other thing that maybe you don't know too is baptizing babies has been around for a long, 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 long time. Now, if you've been tracking with me every once in a while, I'll say that anything that we Lutherans or other Protestants disagree with in the Roman Catholic Church, most of those teachings that we object to, the power of the Pope, purgatory, praying to Mary, and things like that, all those things basically developed between the year 500 and 1000. Okay? In other words, generally speaking, you don't find those things in the first 500 years of the church. But you do find infant baptism. In other words, infant baptism is not a later development in the Middle Ages, 500 to 1,000, like some of these other things. Uh, I, I'm just going to speak generically. Uh, we have references back to about uh, um, 125, Jesus was crucified in 30, uh, 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 referring to infant baptism. And then we have other references like in 180, 198, about references to baptism, uh, infant baptism, things like that. Uh, there was only one person, a very famous church father, who was later declared a heretic, so that should be a red flag, who objected to uh, uh, infant baptism, and he wrote around 200, okay? and he was objecting to infant baptism, which tells you if he's objecting to it in 200, already by 200 they're baptizing infants, aren't they? And his name was Tertullian. Anybody ever heard of him? Kind of a famous church father. But uh, he finally became a heretic. I hope I spelled that right. I think there's two L's. T-E-R-T-U-L-L-I-A-N. Now, I don't want to make a big deal of that. I'm just trying to give you some parameters so that you don't think, so that you put this topic of infant baptism in its proper context, that the vast majority of Christians do this, and that it has roots in early Christian uh, literature and early church fathers. But finally, we have to uh, go to the Bible. Now, what I hope to show you in the next, oh, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, four important things about why we baptize babies. So, uh, would you write them down, and we'll just, it'll take me a while to get through them all, so be patient with me. But this is why we baptize babies based upon the Bible, okay? Because, because first of all, there's nowhere in the Bible that says baptize babies, okay? Is there? No. Ah, is there anywhere in the Bible that says don't baptize babies. No. So what we have to do, since the church has baptized uh, babies uh, since the very beginning, let me back up again. When did the church, when did some Christians, when did some Christians stop baptizing babies and only have what's called adult or believer baptisms? Ready? 16th century, 1500s. Up to the 1500s, church always baptized babies. Only began in the 1500s that they stop baptizing babies. Okay. Now, what are the, what are we, so we have to look at the Bible. Here's the four things I'm going to try to show you the rest of the evening about why we baptize babies. Number one, need. Just write N-E-E-D. And you know where I'm going to go with that one. Are babies sinners? Well, we're going to review that, aren't we? Well, if they're sinners, how do they get what Jesus did for them? That's going to be a big one. Number two, write the word Command, command. In other words, and this is going to be a slam dunk too, are babies included in Jesus' command to baptize all nations? And I'm going to say, yep. We're going to see that, yep. Number three, and this is a biggie. Write the word power. 
Now, what I mean by that is, depending upon our theology of baptism and our understanding of baptism, will lean us one way or the other about baptizing children. Here's my point. If baptism has no power, if baptism doesn't do anything, if baptism doesn't give anything, well, then why would you want to baptize babies? Ah, but if I hope to show you, baptism is a spiritual power of God, and I'll show you how it is, and baptism actually does something and gives something, well, you can see why you might want to baptize a baby then. I hope to show you that. And number four, write the word faith and the word gift, because what I hope to show you as we go through all this, and I think, I think if you've been listening to me, you've already heard me say this, faith is a gift given from God. Now, if that's true of a 45-year-old person who receives the gift of faith through the Word, then you're not going to be stunned to find out that God can give the gift of faith to a baby. And I'll talk about the faith of infants, because the Bible does talk about the faith of infants. Okay. We'll see that. Okay, so those are the four things that we're going to have to look at as we go through about baptism.